I'm now going to go through some major cyber threats. A cyber threat is something which organizations will be concerned about. They are a risk because if they happen, it could cause damage, it could cause theft, data to be leaked, etc, etc. So it's really important to be aware of these different types. So starting off with social engineering, this is the act of manipulating humans. So it's very much about the psychology side of things. So manipulating people so that they give up private information or their money. So private information might be things like a password or bank details. So like I say, psychology, this is not very technical. It's usually trying to pressure somebody uh, often. So for example, you might as an attacker try and pressure an employee to give up private information like a password because in their words, your boss needs this ASAP. You might really put under pressure saying, oh, your boss is asking for it. They're complaining, why have you not given me this information? They might pretend to be somebody else and put on some pressure just to try and get you to give it and hope you'll panic and send it. So that's one example. Another example might be somebody sort of hanging around um, the entrance to a building and hoping you're gonna be able to follow somebody authorized through the secure door. So they might have to tap in with a, um, a tag or a lanyard or a pin number but somebody who's walking past behind them might try and sneak in and often to make this more of a scam they will maybe borrow a lanyard or dress up or pretend like they know the people to try and trick their way in it's a lot of trickery they're aiming to target the human and not anything to do with computers really although often social engineering tactics go via computers but it's still aiming it for humans so phishing is a separate threat, but you could argue is part of social engineering or a type of social engineering. This is where you're trying to obtain this private information again by faking an email or messages to look like they're coming from a trusted source. So you might have got weird text messages, weird emails, which are obviously fake, but they're looking for you to click a link and put in your details or download something dodgy that's what they're trying to do. You can usually spot them because they've been quite urgent. This one's saying your password's gonna expire, you've got to reset it in one day, trying to pressure you. Um, you can usually tell it's not aimed at you legitimately because they won't know your name. It'll be really general. They send these emails to millions of people. And the main way to get information is via a link. You might click the link, it might be a fake version of a website, and you might have to put in your password or username. And they obviously take the information and steal it. Often the spelling is not so good and the big clue that it is a fake one is asking for things only you know. Your bank, your university, your school will never ask for your password because the whole point is only you know it, but an attacker would. Malware is another category of threats. Malware is two words put together, malicious software. So a program which is gonna cause you some harm. That's what malicious means. And there are quite a few types. We're gonna go through three main ones. So a virus, what it will do is insert itself into other computer programs. So you've got programs on a computer which are perfectly fine and are legitimate. A virus will try and insert itself into the code of that program. So much like how a real life virus, like COVID or the flu, go inside your body, a computer virus goes inside a program. And again, much like real life viruses, they replicate. So when you run that program, the real program, the virus code will copy itself, that's what replicates means, and insert itself into other programs. So the virus will spread usually quite quickly by jumping around into other programs on your computer. That can really slow things down, and the virus itself might be doing things like deleting files or trying to obtain information. A Trojan is another type of malware. This pretends to do one task, but actually is doing something malicious in the background. So the virus is purely evil, but a Trojan will at least pretend to do something legitimate. It might be a, a basic video game. It might be a tool like a calculator, something which does work and is fine. But actually the trick is while you are using the legitimate tool, it's doing something malicious in the background. It's named after the Trojan horse story where, so the story goes, a massive wooden horse was given as a gift to a city, 
but inside were loads of soldiers who at night time came out and attacked the city. So the idea of it, it looks like a gift, but actually inside there is something more malicious. And the final type of spy, uh, final type of malware is spyware. So spyware, as the word spy would suggest, collects information about you without your knowledge. So what it's doing is trying to get as much information about you without you knowing about it is the main thing. And this could be, you know, part of a virus, part of a Trojan. It could be its own bit of software. So one example of spyware is a keylogger. A keylogger records everything you're typing. So they'll be looking for things like passwords and usernames and bank details. The spyware will send those details through the internet to the attacker. Another threat is hacking, which is probably by far the most well-known threat, but not always well understood. Hacking is where you're accessing computer systems as an unauthorized user. So you're not going in for normal means of access. The normal way of accessing a system might be through a username and a password. Hacking is going in the back door, so trying to find another way, trying to break your way through to access it, uh, regardless of not knowing things like passwords and usernames. And hacking in real life is both technical and psychological, so it's often a mix of you know, being really good at computers, but also some social engineering style skills. Not always the stereotype of being very solitary tapping away, it's often a lot more about manipulating the human, not just the computer. And it's important to be clear that not all cyber attacks involve hacking. So we just looked at viruses. If you are spreading a virus, that's not really hacking. That's being an attacker, but it's not hacking. Hacking is where you're breaking through um, the defenses. And hacking can be done to just damage stuff. It can be done to try and get an insight into what's going on. But in many cases, it's to do data theft. So data theft is where data is extracted and stolen. So extracted means the hacker is able to send it to themselves from your computer and trying to steal it. So they might be trying to get some important files or some secret information from your computers. The last threat I want to cover is interception. This is where data is stolen when moving through networks. So data theft can be both on one computer getting stolen, but also can get stolen via networks. You know, right now, your computer is connecting to YouTube. YouTube is sending you this video through lots of cables, through lots of connections. Anybody could be, in theory, intercepting that data. So just to give you, two, just to give you an example of two people communicating, the interception comes between the two. So if these people are having conversations about bank transfers, they're giving their bank details, giving an amount of money, somebody could be sat intercepting this data. So if you've got Alice and Bob, who are both perfectly legitimate, if we've got somebody like Eve, who is evil and is intercepting the data, that means they are eavesdropping. Eavesdropping is where you're listening in, intercepting and monitoring for communication. So Eve, in this particular example, might be able to figure out, well, might be able to use their bank number, might be able to know that actually both of them have got a lot of money at the moment. You could target people based on this interception. And it's not that hard. If you've got a wired network, it's quite tricky because you've got to plug yourselves into that wire. But in a Wi-Fi network, all you need to do is sit around for Wi-Fi and try and connect to it. And because the messages are going through the air, you're able to intercept it much more easily. Although we will cover encryption in a couple of videos which can limit this.